Hello and welcome to the episode 305 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. In this episode, along with events happened on the 1st of November, we will also cover things whose date is not certain, but that happened during the month. The Beatles returned to Hamburg, the filming of the music of Lennon and McCartney and the aborted plans to bring the Beatles back to a live stage are the top moments of this episode. On the 1st of November 1960, the Beatles, with John Lennon, Paul McCartney and George Harrison on guitar and vocals, Stu Sutcliffe on bass and Pete Best on drums, performed yet another night at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, alternating on the stage with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. According to Beatlesbible.com, on this date, Bruno Koschmeider, owner of the club, communicated to the Beatles that the contract between his agency and the band had become null. Koschmeider was really mad that the band had started orbiting towards the rival Top Ten Club and, using as an excuse the fact that George Harrison, being 17, couldn't legally work in West Germany, he tried to get rid of the band, notifying them that they had to leave the country by the end of the month. If this was true, and if the Beatles had really reached an agreement with the Top Ten Club, it's hard to understand why they kept performing at the Kaiser Keller, despite being unhappy with the place, their pay and their living conditions. As we will see in episode 325, it will take some time for the German authorities to actually learn that Harrison was underage and working in Hamburg. Anyhow, during the month of November 1960, the Beatles kept going to the Top Ten Club during their half-hour breaks from performing. With the blessing of Peter Eckhorn, owner of the venue, the band got closer to Tony Sheridan, star of the Top Ten and British chart phenomenon at the time, eventually starting to jam on stage with him and with his backup band, The Jets. On the 1st of November 1961, the Beatles, now a quartet, still with Pete Best on drums and with Paul McCartney on bass, performed twice at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, once for the lunchtime break and once for an evening dance event. For this latter engagement, the Beatles topped the bill, also featuring The Strangers and Jerry and the Pacemakers. During November 1961, instead, after watching various concerts of the Beatles at the Cavern Club, Brian Epstein started toying with the idea of becoming the manager of the band to help them to improve their image and further escalate their career. Despite his Liverpool friends tried to talk him out of the idea, Epstein became inquiring about manager's duties, asking his contacts in the London show business circles and, at some point, even Alan Williams, who acted like a de facto manager of the Beatles in 1960. Allegedly, Williams told Epstein, Brian, don't touch them with a f***ing barge pole. On the 1st of November 1962, the Beatles returned on the stage of the Star Club in Hamburg, West Germany. Unlike what had happened in the April and May engagements, check out episode 103 for more info on that residency, the band appeared on the stage alone and as a backing for the main star, Little Richard. Exactly one year later, in 1963, the Beatles' number one EP came out in UK, featuring four songs from the band's first album, Please Please Me. In the evening, the Fabs were at the Audience Cinema in Cheltenham for the opening night of the Beatles' Autumn Tour. The package tour, the fourth throughout the country in nine months and the first officially topped by the Beatles, earned the band £300 per night about £6,300 in 2020 money. Every night, the Beatles performed I saw her standing there, from me to you, all my loving, you really got a hold on me, roll over Beethoven, boys, 
Till There Was You, She Loves You, Money, That's What I Want, and Twist and Shout. But the setlist didn't really matter. The screaming was so loud that nobody could hear anything. The other acts featured in the tour were the Rhythm and Blues Quartet, the Vernon's Girls, the Brooke Brothers, Peter J and the J Walkers and the Kestrels. During the month of November 1963, Beatlemania started growing out of proportions. In the Parliament, questions were raised about the public costs of police protection for the Beatles, protection that had become essential for the safety of the lads and the public itself. The fabs themselves had started to resent the attention, not only getting to and away from their concert venues had become an almost military exercise, but they couldn't walk in the street without heavy disguises if they didn't want to risk their safety. Their families were harassed, their instruments and clothes stolen from their dressing rooms, and, probably worst of all, their 20-25 minute sets were completely inaudible, not only for the public, but for the Beatles themselves, too. Beatles manager Brian Epstein had to routinely plead the audiences not to throw whole packets of jelly babies on the stage after George Harrison was reported saying that he liked the sweets. The band was completely isolated, imprisoned by its own success. 1st of November 1964. The Beatles played the Astoria Cinema in London for their yearly British tour. Exactly one year later, in 1965, the filming of Granada TV special The Music of Lennon and McCartney started at the Studio 6 of the Granada TV Centre in Manchester. The production, filmed without an audience, involved a number of artists performing Lennon McCartney songs, with the Beatles topping the bill. Since an audience track, with cheers and applauses, was to be added to the film in post production, all the artists acted as if acknowledging the presence of these ghost fans. In fact, most of the performances were mimed too. On the 1st of November 1967, with the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film going on at Norman's Film Productions, some post-production was also completed on some Beatles songs. Between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., and then between 2.30 and 6 p.m., All You Need Is Love and Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds were mixed in mono again for the Yellow Submarine feature film with some recorded applauses coming from the Abbey Road collection of sound effects and count recordings. The second session was rounded up by further reduction mixes of Hello, Goodbye and The Fool on the Hill. It is unlikely that the Beatles attended any of these sessions. At some point in November 1967, the Beatles visited TVC Studios in London, TVC TV cartoons, was the company assembling the animations for the Yellow Submarine feature film. Their visit was filmed. The result was included, along with material shot during their 25th of January 1958 session at the Twickenham Film Studios see episode 25 of What A Fab Day for more info on that, in a seven-minute promotional film titled A Mod Odyssey. A Mod Odyssey was first screened by the American network NBC on the 12th of October 1968, immediately after a screening of Help, at 11 pm Eastern Standard Time. On the 1st of November 1968, George Harrison had the distinction to release the first solo album by one of the Beatles. Wonderwall Music, released on Apple Records, had been recorded between UK and India in December 1967 and January 1968. Among the musicians featured in the album, there were Richie Snare and Eddie Clayton, or, using their usual names, Ringo Starr and Eric Clapton. All was not well with the Beatles, though. 
By November 1968, with the approaching release of the Beatles' double LP and all the troubles marking its production, it had become clear that the four were on an easy ground. The unity of the band was at its nadir for years, and business and non-Beatles production concerns kept deepening the gap between each member. Paul McCartney tried to convince the others to return to live performances. After all, it had been the music to unite them, and playing together once again might reignite the spark that seemed to have ceased to shine. During the month, an announcement went out to the effect that the Beatles would have given three concerts at a London roundhouse in mid-December 1968, but, as December approached, the dates were cancelled and the plan was put on hold. Paul couldn't persuade John, George and Ringo to fully commit, and he had to resign to recycle his idea for the Get Back production in January 1969. See episode 2 of What A Fab Day to see how that went. Before closing this lengthy episode, allow me to remind you to visit www.simonmas.com support to see what you can do to help out the production of this and more music-related content. Acquire the deluxe version of the podcast, send me a donation, share the podcast with your friends, drop me a line. Any action will be appreciated. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.